Hi everyone. In this video, you are going to learn about the common source stage with resist to load. Different types of loads we can connect in the common source amplifier. So this particular video deals about the resist to load for the common source stage. If you go to the configurations of mass transistor, so configurations of mass transistor so what are the various configurations that we can create first one common source common source configuration and second common drain configuration and third common gate configuration Okay, as we have seen in the case of bipolar junction transistor when in the BTEC second year, the same configurations you are going to do for mass transistors also. Okay, common source which is analogous to your common emitter, common drain which is analogous to your common collector and common gate which is analogous to your common base. Okay, these are the three different configurations. Now, in this basic building blocks of analog IC design concepts what we are going to study is first we will see the common source stays with two different loads like resistor load in this video I will explain this and diode as a load diode connected load okay these are the two different loads that we are using in the output of common source stays and later we will move on to amplifiers common source amplifier stays common drain amplifier common gate amplifier for all these we are going to calculate three different parameters they are voltage gain input impedance output impedance these are the three parameters that we are going to calculate for all these configurations okay now in this video let us start our required topic that is common source stays with resistive load. Common source stays with resistive load. So, this is the circuit diagram. V in source terminal gate this is the output at the drain and VDD this is the load resistor RL okay so now for this common source stays with resistive load this is the way how to connect the circuit diagram normally we have taken a transistor with input to AC source and RL as the load okay now, in order to explain the operation of this particular transistor uh, common source stays, what we are going to do, we are going to take a sinusoidal signal at the input of this transistor. So, this sinusoidal signal is having variations, multiple variations that V in initially it is 0, slowly it increases to positive peak and again 0, it increases to negative peak and again 0 because the sinusoidal signal varies with respect to time and now when v in is equal to 0 what happens what about the transistor let us consider the transistor as t1 the transistor t1 comes into off state when the input voltage is at 0 potential the transistor t1 is in off state as t1 is in off state there is no flow of current from vdd to ground okay this is the id current let us think that it is id current there is no id current so what about the output voltage so v out is equal to simply we can write vdd v out is equal to vdd now let us consider another situation where v in is slightly increased and greater than vth then what about the transistor transistor comes into on state because it has the required sufficient voltage at the input so transistor comes into on state and now <coughs> the current flowing through this 
transistor T1 ID is equal to K into W by L VGS minus VT into VDS minus VDS square by 2. This is the current that is flowing through the transistor T1 because the transistor is in non-saturation region. Initially, the transistor is in non-saturation region because just the input voltage is just greater than Vt. So, the transistor is in non-saturation region. Uh, this ID increases with respect to the applied voltage Vdd. Okay. So, now how can you write the output voltage? Therefore, output voltage V out is equal to Vdd minus IDRD. In that situation, the transistor is just replaced by a on resistor and this is the load resistor across which we are taking the output. This is the ground and this is plus VDD. This is the current ID. Okay. So, how can you write this? VDD minus KW by L VGS minus VT into VDS minus VDS square by 2 into RD. This is V out equation for the transistor to be in non-saturation region. When input still increases, then T1 comes into saturation. T1 comes into saturation. Then what happens? We will have to take saturation current. Same equation VDD minus K into W by L. 2L into VDS square into RD. This is for saturation transistor. Okay. So, in this way, we can explain the operation of the transistor with respect to the load resistor in three different regions. Cutoff region, non-saturation region and saturation region. This is fine. But when we are going to calculate the voltage gain, input impedance, output impedance, this circuit needs to be replaced by a small signal model. Okay. So, let us go for the small signal analysis. Small signal analysis. Small signal analysis. Small signal analysis means that circuit needs to be replaced by small signal model. This is input voltage, source, gate, drain from where we are taking the output VDD. So now to convert this into small signal model, first we need to represent the transistor in small signal model. So that is plus minus VGS and we have a dependent current source that is GM VGS, this is the source terminal and at the output we are having an internal resistance RD for this transistor and now this RL is connected here to the ground. So, this is the source terminal, this is gate and this is drain. Here is the place we are taking the output. Okay, this is RL. And coming to the input side, input is applied from gate to ground. So, this is the input supply between gate and ground. Okay, so how to draw this, how we have drawn this, see this particular part, this particular part is the internal replacement of the transistor equivalent. This particular part is nothing but your mass transistor. 
small signal model of the mass transistor is equal to this VGS source and current source GMVGS and RD, internal resistance RD. Okay, other than these components, other than this, remaining components are belonging to the circuit. <coughs> okay, see, in small signal model, we need to keep these two points in mind. One is all DC voltage sources must be grounded. All DC voltage sources must be grounded. Next, all coupling and bypass capacitors, all coupling and bypass capacitors need to be short circuited, shorted. Okay. See, that's why this VDD is grounded here and drain to ground we have RL. That's why drain terminal to ground terminal we have this RL. And output is also measured from V out from drain to ground. That's why it is also from drain to ground. Okay. So we have taken this one. That is okay. Now how to calculate AV voltage gain. Voltage gain. AV. How to calculate this? Let us write the output voltage first. Output voltage V out is equal to. See how to write the output voltage equation. This GM VGS is the current source that this current flows like this till the ground and again coming up in the in this direction. Okay, so we are measuring the output voltage from plus minus from top to bottom, but here the current is flowing in the reverse direction from bottom to top. That's why we are taking the current source as minus GM VGS into this current flows in two resistors RD parallel. RL. RD parallel RL. Okay. So VGS coming to VGS where VGS is equal to see here. VGS is equal to what is VGS? VGS is the voltage between gate to source. And similarly, input voltage V in is also applied from gate to source. That's why we can equate these two. Okay. V in is equal to VGS. Therefore, V out is equal to minus GM V in RD parallel RL. So, that is equal to AV is equal to V out by V in is equal to minus GM RD parallel RL. This is the way how to calculate the voltage gain. Coming to the input impedance, Input impedance indicated by ZI that is to be calculated from gate to ground. Remember this input impedance should be calculated from gate to ground irrespective of any type of configuration. Okay, so go to the circuit diagram and see this is the place where we need to calculate ZI. Okay. So, what we have, we have nothing here. It is open circuited, nothing but infinity. So, that's why ZI is equal to infinity. Input impedance is infinity. Output impedance. Coming to the output impedance, which is Z0. How to calculate output impedance? See, output impedance is measured from these terminals. Z0. So, Z0 is we have parallel connection of RD and RL. That's why Z0 is equal to RD parallel RL. That is equal to RD into RL by RD plus RL. This is Z0. So in this way, we can, cal we can calculate the voltage gain, input impedance and output impedance for the common source stage with resistor connected load.